Hello everyone. Today we're going to take a look at some of the key features and benefits of Chroma's 19311 battery cell search tester. The image here shows the fundamental structure of a lead acid battery. A serious concern of lead acid battery manufacturers is the insulation between the positive plate and the negative plate. The reason for this concern is that if these two plates are shorted during production and after electrolyte injection, the cell will fail. It is in the best interest for manufacturers to detect any type of defect in the insulation before the electrolyte injection so they may have the opportunity to repair the defect or replace the bad cell before it goes to the next stage of production. Manufacturers also need to know if any metal impurities have found their way inside the separator layer or whether the separator is actually missing. The way to determine this is by measuring the distance between the two plates. A high voltage is applied to see whether or not the distance can accept the voltage without failure by using the formula E equal to V divided by D. So why is it important to test the lead acid battery before the electrolyte injection? It's because we want to find out if the cell is bad before and after intercell welding. Once a battery is injected with electrolyte and the charge discharge test process occurs, if the battery has an insulation problem, a lead acid battery is difficult to fix or recycle and would most likely be wasted. If we test the cell before electrolyte injection and it fails, then it has been detected early enough to fix the battery, saving production cost. How we test the insulation is by measuring the distance between the positive and negative plates. If two plates make contact, this means the insulation has failed and the two plates short. Even if two plates don't touch but are too close, the risk for two plates coming into contact together is too high. So the insulation is measured by applying voltage to see if the distance is enough to be safe. If the separator is missing, the result is the same, meaning the distance between the two plates is too close, so it's important to find out if the separator exists or not. Quality is another thing that manufacturers need to know about their batteries. I can show you the details of determining quality in the following slides. Some of the manufacturers detect distance and insulation using basic high pot testers. However, it's not the best method. First, when we use a high pot tester, we must provide a continuous output, which will cause energy loss to the battery. Secondly, if we use a DC high pot, then it creates a charging issue. Once the capacitance of the battery increases, it results in a longer test time. Lastly, and most importantly, a high pot tester judges pass fail by leakage current limit. Once the battery contains moisture, no matter the environmental humidity or the liquids between the plates, the leakage current will become very high. A traditional high pot tester will not have the capability to output enough voltage to test the distance between the plates. Our solution to provide better testing is the Chroma 19311 Surge Tester. The 19311 provides a non-destructive, short-period, low-energy impulse voltage on the lead-acid battery cell. Since the output energy is lower than a general high pot, our design will not damage the battery. What sets this unit apart is that the 19311 can provide a high voltage whether the cell contains moisture or not. It doesn't measure leakage current like a general high pot. It provides a surge test to the battery that you will see in the next slide. And the surge test can be applied no matter if the battery is formed or unformed. Let's take a look at the circuit on the left. As I said previously, the surge test applies to a non-destructive period, low energy impulse voltage. During the surge test, the lead acid battery cell resonates with the internal inductor because there is an internal inductor in the 19311 and the 1931110. The units will determine if the lead acid battery cell is good or not by analyzing the resonant waveform or comparing the test waveform with the sample waveform. The main purposes of testing the lead acid battery cell before electrolyte injection are checking whether insulation distance between the positive and negative plates is enough, Checking whether the insulation quality between the positive and negative plates is good. Checking whether the separator between the positive and negative plates exist. And checking whether the positive and negative plates have not already shorted. 
Detecting defects in the battery cell before electrolyte injection can decrease the defective rate of a lead acid battery production. After the switch turns off, the decrease of peak voltage represents the insulation quality of the battery cell. The 19311 specifications are shown here. The unit can output up to 6 kV no matter the leakage current limitation and can completely test 6 cells within 1.5 seconds. A single unit can handle up to 10 channels and up to 25 channels with the optional scanner box. Two comparison methods are used, limits and waveform, which will be explained in the following slides. Here is a screenshot of the waveform when we output the surge voltage. Details will be shown in the following slides. The first function is called peak ratio, which is the ratio between the fifth peak voltage and the third peak voltage of the waveform. This is used to check the insulation quality between the positive and negative plates of a lead acid battery cell. When the insulation quality is low, or the parallel resistance is less because of increased energy loss, the voltage of the fifth peak is decreased. Therefore, the peak ratio of bad insulation quality is less than the peak ratio of good insulation quality. The value of the peak ratio represents the status of the insulation quality between the positive and negative plates of the lead acid battery cell. Delta peak percent is used to check whether or not the insulation quality between the positive and the negative plates of a lead acid battery cell is close to the golden sample. When the insulation quality of the test battery cell and the insulation quality of the golden sample are the same, because the peak ratio of the test waveform and the peak ratio of the sample waveform are also the same, the delta peak percent is 0%. When the insulation quality of the test battery cell is worse than the insulation quality of the golden sample, because the peak ratio of the test waveform is less than the peak ratio of the sample waveform, the delta peak percentage will result in a negative number. Flutter is the total value of the waveform calculated by using the first derivative of differential equation. It is used to measure the contact check. When the probe does not contact the battery cell, the capacitance is much smaller than the capacitance with a good contact. The resonant frequency becomes very high after the switch turns off, which causes the value of the flutter to increase. Flutter is a great measure to detect whether or not the probe contacts the battery cell. In the yellow waveform, you can see the frequency is high. From the formula, frequency is equal to 1 divided by 2pi square root of LC. Since the probes do not contact the battery very well, the capacitance is lower, causing the frequency to be higher. Area, which is comparing the difference of the total area between the test waveform and the sample waveform, is used to check the status of the insulation between the positive and the negative plates. It can also indicate whether or not the separator even exists between the two plates. Area represents the insulation status of the lead acid battery cell. Discharge will occur if the insulation between the positive and the negative plates is poor, insulation distance is too thin, if the separator between the plates does not exist, or if the electric field intensity is high enough. This discharge of energy causes the area size of the test waveform to become smaller than the area size of the sample waveform. You can see in this picture, the area is 43.8% lower than the golden sample. This indicates the poor insulation status between plates, or it can indicate that the battery contains some moisture, decreasing the insulation. Differential area compares the area created between the test waveform and the sample waveform with the total area of the sample waveform. This measurement can be used to check the difference of the battery cell's capacitance. When the capacitance of the battery cell is high, the resonant frequency is low, which also means when the capacitance of the cell is low, the resonant frequency will be high. As you can see in this graph, the difference of the differential area between the golden sample and test sample is 46.1%. This is due to the difference in the cell's capacitance. To measure cell quality, there are two methods of comparison. One is called limits comparison, the other is reference comparison. Limits comparison has the benefit since it is easier to just set the limit value to measure a cell rather than getting the golden sample first. On the other hand, reference comparison is better for production to control the quality balances for every cell against the sample and it's also easier for quality assurance to analyze the results. This image is a screenshot of the 19311's program list. 
In the program list, users can set like cell numbers, output voltage up to 6 kV, as well as set the high-low limit for all of the parameters. For example, area is set for detecting whether the cells can short or if they contain moisture. Differential area is set to measure the capacitance difference and flutter for contact check. For insulation quality, users can set the delta peak percentage limit. This screen shows an example of the test result. This indicates that cell number one out of six is good. Results are all under the parameter limits, so it shows green as you can see at the bottom chart. This is cell number two. You can see the area is less than 41.1% from the golden sample and can be caused by moisture. Here are the results of another cell. You can see the waveform is like a pulse and the area is almost gone with a value of negative 96.2% less than the golden sample. This means the resonated waveform is not available due to the positive and negative plates being shorted. This waveform shows the contact fail due to the frequency being much higher than the golden sample. Not only can users view waveforms, but the 19311 also allows view of complete test results in the cell list. This is ideal for production lines to analyze test results. In conclusion, Chroma's 19311 lead acid battery search tester has a very well thought out feature set. With its real waveform display viewer, R&D and QA can analyze and verify the cell's quality quickly and really understand their situation. For manufacturers who have many models and require many different golden samples and test limit parameters, the 19311 can save up to 200 test items to meet requirements. The contact check function reduces risk if the automated mechanical probes of the test fixture don't connect to the DUTs well. This makes sure all of the batteries are tested before reaching the customer. Our probe design is also four terminal cable, which increases measurement accuracy. The 19311 is also incredibly fast. Throughput is increased since the test time is almost five times faster than using normal HiPot testers. More features include contact check and the capability to accurately measure without the test being affected by the leakage current limit, even if the battery contains moisture. And most importantly, the 19311 surge test is non-destructive, so it won't damage the cells even when a higher voltage is applied to measure the insulation. And that concludes our presentation for today. For more information regarding the 19311 or any of our other products, please visit chromausa.com.